So now in this video, we're going to look at the relay. So this relay is a double pull, double throw relay. So you can see here we got a switch there and a switch there. So even though this is top to bottom switch, the uh, component here, one relay is on the right side and then the other one is on the left side. There's three pins, there's a middle pin, that's the uh, common pin, and right now it's going down. And same over here, it's going down right there. If I take this uh, red jumper right now, there's also a diode down here. We'll come to that later, but uh, a red jumper, there you can see when I have a solid uh, connection to the positive rail. Now current's flowing through the coil, it's switched, the switch. And so it moved, that's the normally open, it moved into the normally closed spot because it's not normal right now. We're energizing the coil and so it pushed these switches into the other position. I remove that jumper, I cut power from the coil and the switch goes back to where it was. So that's double pull double throw pretty straightforward and these two switches are independent of each other so these are usually 5 volts or 12 volts there's also 24 volt I don't know what all voltages are it's really not a terribly common component anymore and I mostly came up with this schematic I took inspiration from other ones but uh, here you can see I got the uh, it's actually ground on the left so I would probably flip it around but uh, because we have the LEDs coming from the positive supply but uh, whatever the schematic will probably fit whatever the uh, circuit demands so there you can see we got 12 volts and here's another thing right now there's about 20 milliamps of current flowing these are 1 kilo ohm resistors 1000 ohm resistors one resistor protecting each LED and we got 12 volts so we expect each one of these LEDs that is lit to have about 10 milliamps of current flowing through them approximately. So now I'm going to uh, switch it. As I said before, there's current flowing now. So we have current going through the coil. This is probably the same current we had before, these two LEDs. It's a red LED and a green LED, both protected by one kilo ohm resistor. Probably 20 milliamps of current. And then so we got 40 milliamps of current going through the coil the currents are adding up now as I said before we have a coil down here I wrote a note on there and uh, that's the last note here really we covered the other ones so it uh, likely needs a flyback uh, diode and so it's a coil it's an inductor basically and uh, it's actually kinda hard to see so I'm gonna turn the uh, power off and pluck this out so you can see that uh, where those two pins were I added these little jumpers and a little diode there so now you notice the diode is reverse biased to the power supply the cathode is over here so it does not conduct when we apply power it actually blocks uh, any current and uh, we're only dealing with uh, 12 volts so it'll block it no matter what but current flows through the coil when we cut the power the current doesn't want to stop flowing through the coil right away so it goes through the diode until the magnetic field collapses and then current stops flowing so that's what the diode does it prevents from uh, when I yank this from current continuing to flow between the gap there from a high voltage and uh, maybe damaging something that I can't take the high voltage so here you can see that we have six pins on the top there and the two pins on the bottom. So that's the coil. And it actually doesn't matter which way is more positive, which way is more negative. Just make sure you adjust accordingly for the diode. You want it to be wired so it's not conducting while it's powered, but it will conduct in the other direction when you yank the power. So the middle pin, that's the common pin. So you can see up here I have a ground jumper because for whatever reason I decided that uh, we would have power come to the uh, uh, switches not the uh, common so that's the normally closed switch the normally open switch that's where I got the power leading and then it leads to ground once the switch goes in that direction so that is the uh, middle pin and that's on both sides so the other demonstration I'm gonna do I gotta make sure that I plug this in I'm off a spot 
plug those pins where everything is connected. So I removed that LED and I'm going to remove this jumper just to show that it's only powering each switch is only uh, switching one side I should say. So let's go back let's look at the uh, power when I turn the power on there you can see I have the red jumper to the positive rail so we got that LED lit but not that one so this has no path it went to a dead point there whereas this does have a path and then we release here now you can see there's only 10 milliamps of current we got rid of that LED so there's no current but if we still had that LED here it would not have a path to ground but I removed all that so that we could see better so that's really about it for relay components so to get the particulars of whichever one you have you gotta really search this part number usually it does show the uh, voltage though and uh, it's got the switching voltage and actually switching voltage looks like it's up there and then that 12 is the uh, 12 volts to uh, switch it so I know it's sideways but uh, things are kind of cluttered I can't really move it so any case you look that up look up the data sheet and you can also tell a lot of times by the pins on the bottom also these relays tend to come in modules now so it's on a board I did other videos with them on the board all you have are a couple inputs where you plug wires into them you give them a signal for switching and then you got a couple uh, outputs on the uh, other side for uh, your switching there's a normally closed normally open all you gotta do is put wires in there clamp them down and attach those wires to your circuit the relay module does the rest it probably already has the flyback diode protection and probably you notice that uh, when I didn't make a solid connection it flickered quick it probably helps reduce that from happening gives it a little time it waits between switching before switching back and whatnot protection software keep the relay relay from wearing out it's probably got like a hundred thousand flips or something like that that you can expect out of it during its lifetime so in any case there's a lot more to study about relays but that's really about it you know uh, in the grand scheme of things there's a lot of finer details there's different switch setups and whatnot to uh, learn later but uh, in any case this is a quick video series this video ran long check out one of the other videos that I'm posting and uh, I will see you in the next video